Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you everything I did to get a top mark and a level nine in my GCSE art from my final pieces to my exam piece, my portfolios. I've got absolutely everything here. I'm going to show you every single page, talk you through the process and fingers crossed it helps you get those top marks in your exams. So best of luck and let's get on with the video. <laughs> Okay, so I think we'll start with the first sketchbook I did, which was this one here. So the way GCSE art works is that you have a sketchbook, which is worth most of your grade, and then you have to meet these particular criteria. And then for the criteria that you meet, that's how you get your marks. The final piece is actually a very small part of the marking and it's not worth that many marks. So the main bulk of the stuff is in here. Um, I had three projects and I used two sketchbooks, so I did two projects in one sketchbook, the final project in a separate one, and I will show you them all. So I think what I'm going to do is turn the camera around and put this on the floor and then walk you through the pages. Okay, so this is the front page. I just wanted like an intro page to talk about, uh, or just to show the marker that I knew I was <laughs> about to start. So um, the first page we did way back at the beginning of year 10 was kind of an intro lesson to techniques. So this page is a double page spread of different popcorn studies. And then there's also a sweet drawing here and they're all in different styles. So this one is using um, pencil sketch. This one is a fine liner, kind of cross hatching to get texture and shading. This one used pen and water, which means you kind of make watercolor using pens, which is quite cool. And then this one is just another pencil, shading pencils. Um, this page, I think you guys can tell, I kind of wanted to make the backgrounds quite exciting as well as the kind of main art. Also, I think it makes the art stand out against the background. So um, this was Mushroom Studies, again, building on the last page. So we've got China Graph pen, um, Ink and Bleed pen again. And then this one was trying to graph and incomplete together. And then this one was just incomplete. So I think at this point I was already refining the techniques that I like the best and figuring out what worked for me. And then just showing the examiners that I was not afraid to experiment with new styles. This one, we've got um, some peppers. Again, they're in the same kind of different range of styles. This one's really cool. It's like little scribbles to get shading. That's quite exciting. And then this one, I've got it in a little um, wallet because it's chalk and it's so messy, but it's a giant popcorn. Um, this one I hate, but it's some sweets. Um, and then we did some photography. More photography. Again, that was a really awful watercolour. It was like the first watercolour I did and hopefully I made progress as I went on. We did this giant strawberry study. Um, and then we have to do artist studies and the main with thing with the artist studies is that you need to make your own version of one of their drawings so like an artist copy and then you have to do something in their style um, so my primary study was of one of Joel Joel Penkman's like fab eye studies so I think this was the one I replicated here uh, I think I did an okay job it's not quite the right background, but it's all right. And then this was a ph photograph I took and then replicated with watercolour. Um, the main thing with these to get top marks is that you just need to make sure your artist study is really similar to their original and that you really understand kind of their thought process when they're making that art. So then we have Sarah Graham and her art is really cool. It's so realistic. Like you think that was a photograph. Um, so to try and replicate it was quite hard, but Again, I think I copied this one in the top corner and then I did my own kind of style version of her art. Um, so that was quite exciting. But again, we didn't, in the first project, our teachers chose the artist for us. Um, again, another one we did was Dina Wakeley. So this is my kind of copy version of one of hers. And then I did a double page development spread. Um, trying to just experiment with the different styles and the motifs that she uses so she uses quite a lot of these little robins so i did my own version and because the theme was like food i've got like a um com combining it with previous artists we've got like a chop chop lolly um like a pineapple mushroom all of that kind of foodie stuff going on um the next page was some more photography so we're doing um emotion portrayal primary photography so i got my dad to be the subject um, <laughs> and then 
this I think is replicating the Joel Penkman studies that I did. Um, and then using the ink and bead, which was a, the kind of process that I liked the most. I thought I would try and experiment with that a bit more, but relating it to the theme. Um, and then, yeah, I did this fork drawing of like in the Joel Penkman style. And then some design ideas. So we move on to kind of planning for final pieces inspired by the three different artists I studied. So I think these were my little design ideas. We had a square canvas and I made um, four designs on this page, all inspired with different elements of the different artists. And then um, four more on this page that are a bit more kind of simplified and only taking in two of the different artists styles. And then combining the two together, this was my final design. This was what my final piece looked like. And then this was like a to scale kind of the bottom left corner of what the canvas would look like. And then um, you have to put in like a photograph card of all the photos you used to make sure they're your own work and then talk through all the process. So I will now show you the final piece that I did based on this. Unfortunately, it's not actually in the best way. It's kind of been put in the attic and so the mushrooms are like falling apart. But um, this is it based off that those final drawings that you saw. So we've got a Sarah Graham inspired Marmite, a Joelle Penkman inspired kind of three forks in a row, and then the background and the whole style, most of it is inspired by Dina Wakeley. And yeah, so taking elements from all of the artists you study, really showing off their style, showing that you understand what it is they're trying to achieve. That's how you're gonna get those marks for your final piece. It's not necessarily about what you produce looking amazing. Like, I really don't like this. I actually would never buy this. It's kind of ugly. Um, but that's not the point. The point is it takes inspiration from the artists that I studied. So that's that. So I'll move on to my second project. The second project is uh, this one, Natural and Man Made. And this one I kind of did over the end of the first bit of year 10 or the end of the last bit of year 10 and the start of year 11 so this was a mood board page that I had and from right from the get-go I kind of had this idea that the natural stuff was all going to be really green and the man-made element was going to be kind of grey and a bit more industrial looking so this was a study from a jasmine plant we have in our garden this was just a drawing I did based off a photo from the internet and then this was in a cover lesson um I did like tracing paper with some flowers and the idea was that the man-made stuff is encased in nature, so we're underneath and then like the plants are on the top, that kind of thing. Um, then we did some more kind of pencil sketches, so I did a massive Swiss, Swiss oh, I can't speak, Swiss cheese plant leaf, which is that one there, I quite enjoyed doing that one. And this one is a hand, and then our teacher wanted us to experiment with kind of photo editing skills, so in here I've got a kind of, uh, I think I edited the drawings of my hands and my leaf onto a skyline. I don't know why, but hey, that's GCSE art. And um, this is a drawing of a succulent and then showing that the root structure like beneath house plants is actually quite deep. So we only really appreciate the stuff that we see on the top, but there's like cool roots going on underneath. And then I did some cacti drawings. These are actually, this was a cactus I had in my room. It's based off a cactus I had in my room, which is now at my room in my room at uni. Absolutely huge. Um, so that puts it all in perspective, really, how long I've had that cactus. And then, again, there were some cool perspective drawings of, like, a skyline. Um, this, again, I'm not really sure where I got, I think I probably got the idea for this from Pinterest. And another Swiss cheese plant. I really like the leaves. Um, I kind of carried the cheese plant leaf style throughout my sketchbook. And then here's my first artist study. So we did Carl Blossfelt. Um, he kind of showed the architecture of plants. So we've got this one, which kind of looks like a skyscraper. And then I did my own study of that piece, which I did in Biro Pen, I think. And this one is another artist study of that. So again, this is in bio pen but his ones are his his are photos not drawings so i've replicated his photos in these are in bio pen this one's pencil that's a block print and that one's acrylic paint and then i think i went on a school trip to kew gardens to look at some of these kind of natural structures versus the man-made structures so there was a glass house that had loads of cacti in and you know me i love my cacti 
So I then did a little artist study of that. And there's one of the ceiling. Oh, this structure here, you can kind of see here. Um, I then I did a massive sketchy acrylic mm, montage type thing. These are so cool, these firecracker flowers. And I just absolutely love the vibrancy. So I think on the next page, yeah, I did a study watercolour. And you can tell this watercolour is a lot better than the one I did at the beginning of the GCSE of the suites. And that one is of a building in London. So then I did like a review page. Where am I now? What progress have I made? And then this is a study of the ceiling. I hated, I hated this piece. It took me forever to do. Um, okay, then I did another artist study. So Ian Murphy was quite cool. He did a lot of architecture studies. And that's his piece. And then this is the one I, that my like version of it. Not bad. It's got kind of masking tape down to give it that texture that he achieves in his work. So definitely don't be afraid to experiment with different textures and using masking tape and pa papier mache in your art. Then I did a Christopher Ryland study and he focuses largely on watercolour and acrylic. So I did a watercolour uh, artist study of, I think it's that Fox Love in the top left there. Okay, and then some photography. So I went to a local abbey and took some photos of the, the old monastery there and some more photos from Q. And then focusing on the Christopher Ryland and Ian Murphy work, I did this kind of wall thing. My teacher thought it was really funny that I put wall because it's so clearly a wall. Um, then we have some leaves some more succulents and just talking about the colours of the natural world it's quite important to make a lot of like writing in your art sketchbook it kind of seems counterintuitive but examiners love you to talk through your thought processes so then we've got some design ideas again for the final piece and what I wanted to show was the kind of reclaiming of the land so plants reclaiming the land that they once ruled and growing through or growing on top of a Ian an Ian Murphy style wall so kind of Christopher Ryland, Carl Blossfeld inspired striking plants and then an Ian Murphy wall. So these were the various ideas I had at the beginning. And I kind of came up with this as the very final one. So I narrowed it down. I had about 12 ideas, um, different versions of the same one over and over again. And yeah, this was the final piece design. I talked about why I chose it. And then that is a little photo of the actual one I made. So, and again, I've got my photo reference sheet here. So I'll just show you this in the big form. Well, sadly, again, this one's been in the attic and it's like kind of curled up, but that's kind of what it looked like. It's absolutely huge. It's, um, I think it's A1 or A2, must be A1, massive. Um, I think we had five to ten hours to work on these in a kind of mock exam conditions. And yeah, that is the final piece for my natural versus man-made. And this, this is my final sketchbook that I had. So this is the exam piece, which we did from January of year 11 until kind of May, early May. And this is the one where the topic isn't decided by your teachers, it's decided by the exam board. And then you get to pick, well, they give you a selection of different topics and you get to pick the one you do. So here's the one I chose. I did Ordinary and that's the cover page. So I did this mind map on what I thought Ordinary meant. So you've got Ordinary Routines, Ordinary Faces, Humans. So I put all of these photos in just for a bit of inspiration about what it is to be ordinary and started working on the concept of just ordinary people. So I did some observational studies, did a photo photograph then I did like a one of these pen and bleed pieces that I'd been doing way back when I was doing popcorn I took basically got my dad and my family to model for me and I took photos of their ears of their face and did hand studies so this is a biro version of this photo this mouth is my dad's um in sketching pencil and then I did some more of the same so again my dad modeled for me and I did some studies from him in different forms. And um, again, if you want to insert pages, I highly recommend getting a ring bound book because then you can in insert pages and tie them in. So that was that. This one I was called, cool. I did oil pastel of his ear. 
Um, and then this is my first artist study. So I did Francoise Neely, I think, or Nelly. And then this is their piece, and then my version of it. Um, it's quite tricky to get the texture right of this style. So I was doing my own version of it, but I just, it was a bit garish and I didn't really love it, to be honest. And so I did a second artist study on Sebastian Del Grosso. This piece is like a tiny bit from this. I didn't want to do the whole thing. So I just did the small corner and that was enough to kind of show that I'd grasped the basic concept of what his style was. I tried to replicate his style in my own work, but focusing on the ordinary facial features. So we've got hands, ears and mouth with the kind of sketchy style that he has. And then building on the two studies that I'd already done, I kind of wanted to combine the sketchiness and the flair of the Sebastian Del Grosso with the bright colour scheme of um, Nieli. So yeah, that's this page. Again, these are from the photos that I took at the beginning. So it's all inspired by my own work, but we're in their style. And I really carried this one motif all the way through my textbook, my sketchbook. Rosie James did a lot of like needlework in her art, so needle and thread kind of embroidery. So this is an artist study of uh, that piece up there. So I actually embroidered into the sketchbook, which was quite <laughs> quite fun. And I did embroidery on the, the mouth and around the hand here. And then my final design ideas, and I think this is quite a short sketchbook because it's just like a much shorter, we only get a term and a half, or even if that, to work on it. So there's not as much progression, but you work through your ideas and your artist studies a lot more quickly. Um, so these are some of the design ideas I had. I knew I was going to do a canvas and these kind of bright colours crossed with a Sebastian Del Grosso sketchy feel. This one I really loved. It was inspired by a piece I'd done earlier in the book. And I just thought it was really bright and colourful. So originally I'd wanted to do it on a white background and I was going to use all these different techniques. So this one is um, sewing, this one's a sketchiness and this one is the kind of palette knife style that is used by Nieli. So then I narrowed it down to these two final design ideas and this was the one I ended up choosing. So I will show you... Oh, that's my contact sheet of the, pay, the um, art that I used. The photos but i will show you the final piece the final final piece i did in my exam so i think we had 10 hours to work on the exam piece so i will show you that now i think this is probably one of my favorite pieces although i don't know this one does come close but this one i do really like it it's very colorful it's really bright it's got the palette knife technique of the artists and the sketchiness of inspired by del grosso but also these are i embroidered the white bits in and the black here using thread so it definitely incorporates elements of every artist I studied and overall I was really pleased with this piece and yeah it was so nice do you know what the art GCSE exam was so lovely because while I was making working on mine other people working on theirs I just got to walk around and see everyone doing their final pieces and it felt like such a good way to show off everything all the skills we'd gained over the last two years so yeah that's my final piece I did an exam so that is it those are my final pieces those are my sketchbooks i hope you found it useful and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to comment them down below i will do my very best to answer them and i will see you guys all again very soon in my next video